welcome to Kragos Den. As you can see, I have a box on my desk, which means it is time for yet another haul. Pretty much the only type of video we do around here, but this is one I'm incredibly excited for. This is stuff I pre-ordered last year, around May or June 2020 I think. So this haul has been a long time in the making, and it's come all the way from the land of the US of A. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, remember to subscribe, and turn on notifications. Alright, let's get stuck in. Okay, I'm gonna be super careful here, just slicing across the tape. Because I don't want to repeat of what happened with my Black Series haul. Oh, nice. This looks like it's been really well packaged. Yeah, this order is from the Big Bad Toy Store, a website in the US. They're not sponsoring this video or anything, but check them out if you want to get your hands on some collectible figures or whatnot. Anyway, we'll start with this fella. By himself on the side here. This is the Super Armor Batman action figure from Batman The Adventures Continue. For those of you who don't know, Batman The Adventures Continue was a digital first comic that served as a continuation of the legendary Batman The Animated Series. The cartoon originally aired from 1992 to 1995 and spawned further animated TV series, feature films, comic books and video games. To this day, it is consistently ranked as one of the greatest animated television shows ever made. Batman The Adventures Continue was written by Paul Dini and Alan Burnett, producers of the original animated series and it aimed to fill in the gaps in the original show's continuity and introduce comic characters that never appeared in the show. This one features Batman in his armoured bat suit, which is very clearly inspired by the armour he wears in The Dark Knight Returns to fight Superman. That also featured in the live action Batman v Superman movie, but we won't get into that. This does have a little bit of a nick up here on the card backing. Nothing too bad though, I don't think. Oh, he's got a kryptonite Bowerang. That's cool. And I didn't even realise this figure came with a second headpiece. Got an older looking Bruce Wayne with some grey hair on the sides. I'm loving this figure. Back when I pre-ordered these, we only had the preliminary pictures, so it was just like a glam shot of the Batman fig without any accessories or anything else extra. But having this in hand, I love it. Okay, next one, and I've just spoiled what's in here. But you can see this says collector's grade. With Big Bad Toys, you can choose to have standard or collector's grade packaging. I think it was only a couple dollars more for collector's grade, so I figured it was worth the extra splurge. But once they received my order, they refunded the difference on the Super Armor Batman and downgraded it to standard. Apparently because they didn't receive any stock that met their collector's grade specs. So I guess it's time to see what exactly they mean by collector's grade. I mean straight away it's very nice that they come in their own individual boxes. Alright, here we go. It is Azrael. And he's in a special little bag as well. The original Azrael first appeared in the Batman comics in the 90s, most notably during the Nightfall arc. Azrael actually took on the role of Batman after Bane broke Bruce Wayne's back. But soon after, he revealed his true colours as a mad zealot and Wayne was forced to confront him and reclaim the cape and cowl. This is a really cool looking version of Azrael. My first experience with the character was from a line of action figures by Kenner called Legends of Batman. The version I had had this really striking red and black suit with gold trim. But I love how they've incorporated the character's look here into the animated series style. Oh, and I just noticed this figure is number 52 as well. 
significant number for DC fans out there. Okay, so this one I'm opening from the bottom to keep it a surprise. I also keeps that collector's label intact. One thing that's always been consistent with all these animated series figures from the originals is they never have anything on the back of the card. Would have been nice if they had put a bio or checklist of the other figures. Okay, so this fella is the Red Hood. You can see his name on the side there. And this is Jason Todd as the Red Hood. He's got a very mean looking face on him. And there's his red hood or helmet. I'm really interested to find out how they include Jason Todd in this canon. Because they skipped over him in the original cartoon. Going straight from Dick Grayson as Robin to Tim Drake. Although their version of Drake did include some elements of Jason's character and backstory. In the comics, Jason was the second Robin until he was brutally murdered at the hands of the Joker. Years later, Jason returned, newly resurrected as the Red Hood, and he was not very happy to learn that the Joker was still alive and Batman hadn't avenged him. This is a great looking figure. I love that they've given him the distinctive white streak in his hair that he got as a side effect of being brought back from the dead. He's got a whole bunch of accessories as well, including some different hands in various poses, and a epic looking red Batarang. One thing that has always puzzled me though, why do they give these figures air holes? Are they worried they're not going to be able to breathe or something? Genuinely, if you know the answer, let me know in the comments below. I'm truly perplexed by this. Last one, and I'm already wishing I had ordered more of these. You see, these are going to be like gold dust now. Because this logo down here for DC Direct, well, DC Direct is no more. And these figures are some of the last ever action figures they've produced. I talked a bit about this in my DC Multiverse figure haul. But DC Direct, or DC Collectibles as I knew it, was shut down last year, and all the figures and merchandise production was outsourced to different third party companies. Sadly, this meant that a lot of already announced stuff was cancelled, including another wave of figures in this series. There was going to be new versions of both Batman and Catwoman, as well as animated series versions of Vampire Batman and the Batman Who Laughs that I was really excited for. Now, they'll never see the light of day. One figure that managed to just make it through though, is Deathstroke. Looking back, it's very surprising this character never actually appeared in the original cartoon, considering he's popped up just about everywhere else since. Video games, numerous TV shows, heck, even the post credit scene of Justice League. I'd almost go as far to say he's been a bit overused, except I really do like this design. They've put him in his original comics, Yellow and Blue, and again, I had no idea this figure was going to come with a second headpiece. That's epic. I love how the tails of his bandana are displayed like that. He's actually got a fair amount of extra detail on him, although not too much that it doesn't fit the style of the animated series. Yeah, this is fantastic. So there you have my Batman The Avengers Continue action figure haul. I'm patiently waiting for the trade paperback collection of the comic to be released, as I've held off reading the individual issues. I don't think that would be affected by the closure of DC Direct, as the comics publishing was always separate to the toys. It sucks though, because these figures will now be very scarce. As they were the last out of the gates, they've only been made in very limited quantities. So some of the other figures in the series I was planning on picking up later, will now be going for redonkulous money. I did eventually want to get the new version of the Joker they released with this wave, but that's already going for triple or even quadruple the original retail price. Yeah. Ouch. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, drop me a message in the comments below, and while you're at it, hit that subscribe button, and together, we'll discover what's inside Craggle's Den.